welcome to Nonprofit Horizons, your compass for navigating the ever-changing landscape of the nonprofit sector. Nonprofit Horizons is sponsored by HBI, the Helen Bader Institute for Nonprofit Management at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, a leading source of expertise and education for the nonprofit community for over 20 years. Your host is HBI Associate Director, Bryce Lord. Welcome to Nonprofit Horizons, the podcast that explores the latest news and best practices in the nonprofit sector. I'm your host, Bryce Lord, and today we're talking about compensation and the recent changes to overtime rules that are affecting nonprofits across the country. Compensation is a critical issue for nonprofits where budgets are often tight and resources are limited, but recent changes to overtime rules are having a significant impact on how nonprofits approach compensation. So in this episode, we'll dive into the details of the new overtime rules, discuss the implications for nonprofits, and hopefully provide some strategies to ensure compliance. As nonprofits, we're no strangers to change. We, we're constantly adapting to new regulations, shifting donor priorities, and evolving community needs. But one area that's often overlooked is compensation. We know that our employees are our greatest asset, but we often struggle to provide them with the compensation they deserve. Compensation is more than just a paycheck. It's a reflection of our values and our priorities. When we invest in our employees, we're investing in our mission. We're showing them that we value their time, their talent, and their dedication. But compensation is also a very complex issue. We have to balance our desire to attract and retain top talent with the reality of our limited budgets. We have to navigate the nuances of salary scales and benefit packages and performance evaluations. And so now, with these recent changes to overtime rules, we have to add another layer of complexity to the mix. These new rules, which went into effect in July 2024, have significant implications for nonprofits and their employees. What do these changes mean for nonprofits? How can we ensure that we're providing fair compensation to our employees while still staying within our budgets? And what are the potential consequences of noncompliance? First question on everybody's mind is what are these new overtime rules and how do they affect nonprofits? On April 23rd of 2024, the U.S. Department of Labor announced a final ruling on overtime that will make changes to who is exempt from overtime. It increases both the standard salary threshold to be able to receive over overtime and the threshold to be exempt from overtime. It also establishes a rule where these thresholds will be adjusted for inflation every three years. These rules began going into effect July 1st of 2024. Under the previous executive administration or professional exemption or EAP exemption from overtime pay, an employee must be paid at least $684 a week to be eligible for overtime. This new rule will increase the threshold in installments. So beginning on July 1st, the salary threshold increased to $844 a week. Beginning January 1st of 2025, it will then go up to $1,128 a week. Any employee paid below these salaries then becomes eligible for overtime. Also, 
under the current highly compensated employee or HCE exemption from overtime, employees earning a minimum of $107,432 annually previous to, previous to July 1st, 2024, were exempt from overtime. This rule now increases the minimum salary threshold to $132,964,000 a year. Beginning January 1, that goes up to 151000 164 a year. Finally, beginning July 1 of 2027, all of these thresholds, both EAP and HCE, will begin to automatically adjust for inflation every three years. This final ruling does not create an exemption for either threshold for nonprofits. To put this in perspective, the 2024 shift is a 23% increase from the previous threshold. The 2025 shift is a 33% increase. These are significant jumps, and they're going to affect a lot of nonprofits. The National Council of Nonprofits estimates that this final rule will convert 460,000 nonprofit workers from exempt to non-exempt and it projects a total cost of $44.8 million to nonprofit employers. So what does this mean, mean for nonprofits? I mean, the impact is significant. Many nonprofits rely on exempt employees to work long hours without overtime pay. But with this new rule, these employees may now be eligible for overtime, which can be a significant added expense for nonprofits. According to the National Council of Nonprofits, 75% of nonprofits reported a moderate to significant impact on their operations, and 60% will need to increase salaries or reclassify employees to comply with this new rule. This is a big deal for nonprofits that are operating on tight budgets. And the thought of adding overtime pay to the mix can be overwhelming. But it's not just about the cost. It's also about the administrative burden of tracking hours and managing overtime. It's not just about the financial impact, though. This new rule also has implications for employee morale and retention. If employees are suddenly eligible for overtime pay, they're naturally going to expect to receive it. And if they don't, this could lead to dissatisfaction, which leads to turnover. Additionally, the new rule may also impact the way nonprofits structure their jobs and schedules. Others may need to adjust their schedules to ensure that employees are not working excessive hours. But it's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> this new rule also presents an opportunity for nonprofits to examine the comp their compensation practices and ensure that they are fair and equitable. By paying employees a living wage and providing them with benefits and opportunities for advancement, nonprofits can attract and retain top talent and build a more sustainable organization. So what can nonprofits do to comply with this new rule? One strategy is to reclassify employees who are now eligible for overtime pay. This can involve converting them to hourly employees or adjusting their job duties to ensure they meet this new exemption threshold. Another strategy is to simply increase salaries to meet the new exemption threshold. This can be a significant expense, but... It might be necessary in order to retain key employees and avoid overtime pay. For example, you have a development director who was previously exempt from overtime and now may be eligible. You can simply increase their salary, which ensures that they remain exempt from overtime. Third strategy is to implement a time tracking system to accurately track employee hours. This can be a manual system like a paper timesheet or an automated system like a digital time tracking tool. 
by tracking employee hours, you can ensure that you're accurately paying overtime and avoiding any potential lawsuits. You can also use this data to identify trends and patterns in employee work hours, which can then help you make informed decisions about staffing and scheduling. A fourth strategy is to review and revise your employee handbook and your, pol and your HR policies to ensure they're compliant with this new rule. This may involve updating your overtime policy, your compensation policy, and your employee classification policy. By reviewing and revising your policies, you ensure that you're providing clear guidance to employees and managers on how to comply with these new rulings. You can also avoid any potential lawsuits by ensuring that your policies are fair and equitable. You can provide training and education to employees and managers on these new rules and its implications. This can include training on how to track hours, how to request overtime, and then how to manage overtime pay. With this, you're ensuring that employees and managers understand the new rule and its implications, and you can avoid potential mistakes or missteps by ensuring that everyone is on the same page. These recent changes to overtime are having a significant impact on nonprofits, and it's essential to understand the implications and take steps to comply. Compensation is a critical issue for nonprofits, and it's not just about compliance with the latest regulations. It's about investing in our employees, our mission, in our community. It's about recognizing that our employees are our greatest asset and that they deserve to be compensated fairly and competitively. It's about creating a culture of transparency, equity, and respect. So as you navigate the complexities of compensation and overtime, remember, it's not just about checking a box or avoiding a lawsuit. It's about building a strong, sustainable organization that's committed to its mission and its people. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Nonprofit Horizons. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out. Please like, subscribe, share it with your friends. And if you want to learn more about compensation and overtime rulings, be sure to check out our show notes for some additional resources and links. Until next time, I'm Bryce Lord, your host for Nonprofit Horizons. Keep pushing boundaries, keep dreaming big, and most importantly, keep doing your incredible work. This has been Nonprofit Horizons with Bryce Lord, Associate Director at the Helen Bader Institute for Nonprofit Management. To learn more about HBI and the online nonprofit management graduate programs available at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, visit uwm.edu slash HBI.